Hello everybody and welcome back to another video for the day. We are heading back into r slash Am I the Devil? And if you guys would love to be absolutely amazing, show your support and see more videos like this one in the near future, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below to start up the wholesome internet discussions, and if you guys have not already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Also, if you guys would like to save 10% on your next order of gamer subs, use code Tommy at checkout or click the link down below. It'll apply it automatically to your transaction and it helps support the channel. Am I the a-hole for choosing my mom over my wife when she was in labor? I, 30M, am the proud father of a newborn baby girl. My 30F wife and I usually have a great marriage with occasional disagreements, but never anything like the ongoing argument we have been having since the baby was born. My wife's family lives across the country. We live in a town close to my mother. I am an only child, so it was known early on that I would be my wife's support person during labor, which I was really excited about. This was a pregnancy we had been looking forward to for over a year, and we were both excited to be parents. We had a really good birth plan and felt as prepared as you can be as first-time parents. Well, a couple of weeks ago, my wife went into labor and we went off to the hospital. The labor took quite a long time. We had been at the hospital for over eight hours and my wife was at seven centimeters and having some very painful contractions when I received a call. It was from a hospital on the other side of town calling as my mother's next of kin to advise that she had just suffered a heart attack. As you can imagine, I was devastated. I asked about her condition and though they couldn't guarantee me she wouldn't suffer a further heart attack, she was awake and in a stable condition and all of her vitals were positive. I explained to my wife and apologized before saying I needed to be there for my mother. My wife, between contractions, said that she understands what a stressful situation this was and feels for my mom, but that mom was in a stable condition and she really needed me here as she had no one else. I again apologized and said that I'd be back as soon as possible and raced over to check on my mom, who thankfully seemed okay apart from a bit of pain and disorientation. I unfortunately missed the birth of my baby and my wife ended up needing a c-section. She has been really upset with me ever since, keeping her distance and not talking as much as usual. When I approached her about it, explaining that it was an emergency and I thought she would have been understanding, she said that it wasn't really an emergency because my mom was stable and she can't get over the fact that I abandoned her in a real emergency when the emergency phase had passed for my mother. She said that it would have been different if my mother wasn't stable and that I should have waited and stayed with her. I feel like I was put in a really tough position and while I feel really bad about not being there for my wife and newborn, I would have felt awful if anything happened to my mom and I didn't go. I feel like there was almost no good decision here. But my wife disagrees and thinks the fact that I chose to go to my mom shows where my priorities lie and that they aren't with our family. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? Uh, yeah, very much. Toy. Look, I can understand there being a bit of a, like, a sudden flash of stress if you happen to have heard, like, hey, yeah, your family member had a heart attack. But you also got the information stating that they had already taken care of everything and that she was just a little disoriented from stuff that was going on, but also that she was in a nice and stable condition, meaning that you had no reason that you needed to run over there. Essentially, you could have just checked on it, checked in on her over the phone. Am I the a-hole for not spending my son's birthday with him? I, 51F, have one son. I'll call him Dave for now. Dave is from my previous marriage. My ex-husband and I broke up because we were young and inexperienced. Either way, after a long period of not talking at all, we slowly repaired our relationship and remained friendly for Dave's sake. Both me and my ex-husband are remarried, 
And as soon as it sounds like we all get along, me and my ex-husband, my his wife, and my husband, they also have two more kids now, and I regularly give the older one guitar lessons. Dave moved away after deciding to go to university when he was 19, and after graduating, he decided to continue living further away from us. We still keep in contact, but I'd say I see him a lot less often than I see my ex-husband's children. Dave's birthday is on the 26th of December, and up until he was 22, we usually got together and celebrated at my house. When he turned 22, we had a he had a bad allergic reaction to something, and the evening was pretty much over. After that, he had no interest to celebrate with us again. And for this year, he announced as well that he's not going to celebrate his birthday, even though it is more significant since he is turning 25. I am still getting him a present, and all of that, but I respect that he wishes to spend his day alone or with friends. He then asked me what I would have planned for that day since it is still a holiday and I explained that his dad and his new wife would be coming over with the kids and we would have a little bit of a get together. I joked that we would be drinking champagne in his name and maybe even bake a cake. He didn't take that well. He didn't yell or got loud on the phone, but I could hear him mumble something along the lines of, of course you are and then audibly just said, Okay, have fun, Mom. That was a few weeks ago. I haven't heard from him since, and going this long without contact from him is weird, even if it is just a text or a phone call. Every time I tried to call him, it goes to voice message, and it auto-replies with, I'm busy. His dad hasn't heard anything either, but their relationship has been strained for a while. He hasn't texted his siblings either, I don't see how I'm in the wrong here since he openly stated that he didn't want to celebrate his birthday, but I would like to hear some opinions. Edit, my son's allergic reaction came from mine and my ex-husband's dogs, but he knew about them and never once told us to get rid of them. Edit 2, I think I've explained everything in the comments, so I have nothing more to say if someone has genuine advice to offer. Thank you! Look, I'll tell you this right now, if anybody has that type of reaction around you making some joke about drinking around them, it's probably the fact that there's something that you're not saying that is very much a bad reason to warrant that kind of reaction. Am I the a-hole for not participating in an optional university assignment? I just got a rough talking to from my professor, so I need a second opinion. I'm in my first year of university, and I'm ta taking a creative entrepreneurship class. The latest project we had assigned was creating a mock project and pitching it to the class a la Shark Tank. No biggie, I worked hard on it, completed it, and presented no problem. Now, the kicker was the professor would choose a handful of students who did the best, and we would present again this time to a set of outside industry professionalists who would act as mock judges and offer feedback on our pitches. This was all known beforehand, and while I did want to do well, I had no intention of doing the second presentation, on the account of, frankly, my terrible stage fright. One time was enough for me. Good thing the professor mentioned that it was optional. A week later, I discovered that I was chosen through the course site, also detailing how the professor would be holding a Zoom meeting for an overview and practice runs of the final presentation. Well, I thought he said it was optional. Good luck to everyone else and went about my day. The day came for the second round of presentations, taking place in an amphitheater, a lot grander of an event than I had assumed, especially considering this is a first year program. Good thing I'm not up! On a projector screen above the podium were the names of all of those who were chosen, including my own. I assumed that my absence in the Zoom meeting would proxy opt me out or that it was willing students that were chosen simply needed to perform, and the professor would disregard the others, but apparently not. 
Frozen in a state of confusion, I watched the first few presenters do their thing before I was called to the podium. Easy, I calmed myself down and simply told the professor that I wouldn't be presenting and that they could move right along. No biggie, wrong. What do you mean you're not presenting? The professor was initially confused and then became quite cross, saying that I was unprepared and wasting a spot for other students who had worked tirelessly on their own project and actually wanted this opportunity. I was weirdly guilt-tripped, and even after I reminded him that it was optional, he still scolded me in front of the amphitheater. While it became clear that the professor would have swapped with another runner-up student in the event of a dropout, it was an odd reaction to what was, to me, a simple misunderstanding over a project barely worth a quarter of our grade. He reluctantly conceded and moved along with the presentations, but that interaction did not sit right with me at all. Considering I too worked hard on my project but simply didn't choose to go to the bonus level. Again, after I should have personally emailed the professor beforehand, he never stated explicitly to opt out and assumed that everyone who was chosen was presenting. I have to wonder if a situation like this occurred in other years of the class being held, or if I'm just an idiot, a spot-holding a-hole. Uh, yes, you are, very much so. So, instead of actually telling the professor beforehand that you were going to opt out of the presentation, you just thought just because you didn't happen to show up to the presentation itself on Zoom, then that means that you just would not be in the running for that presentation at the amphitheater. No, maybe you should have done, oh, I don't know what that common sense thing is, uh... Yeah, you know, maybe you should have said something. I, 24M, think I'm dating a white supremacist, 22F is our future doomed. I, 24M, have been dating my GF, 22F, for about two years now, and our relationship has been nothing short of amazing for the last two years until recently. For context, I'm a native New Yorker who went to NYU, and I work in finance. I'm about as white as it gets. I think I'm mostly Irish, but honestly, who knows? This shouldn't matter, but you will find out soon enough why it does. And yeah, I think you could say that I'm pretty liberal compared to the rest of the nation. My girlfriend is from the Deep South and went to undergrad there. She graduated pretty early and moved to New York City to live her big city dream. You can tell pretty quickly from her accent and demeanor that she is a southern girl. We met at one of the places I hang out at and she approached me first. She is sociable and didn't know anyone in the city. I had my doubts, but I gave it a chance and we hit it off over a few months. She was a lot of fun to be around and just has the energy to make her what makes life interesting. She's funny, spontaneous, and always down to do something new. We didn't have a whole lot in common at first, but I managed to make her a Yankees fan and I've kind of gotten invested into the old Miss Football now. We have gotten increasingly serious, and she recently has started talking casually about the future. Oh, when we get married, that dress would be adorable for our first daughter, etc. I was a little shocked at first, but the more I thought about it, I realized I didn't want that kind of future with her, so I've gone along with it. She has met my family, who admittedly were a bit surprised by my choice of girlfriend. Her accent and Bible Belt nature was a bit of a surprise to them, but eventually my mom and sisters grew to like her. In all this time though, she never invited me to her family home, even though she's gone for weddings and funerals. This should have been the first red flag. A few weeks ago I was helping her move when I saw a box named Important Documents. I noticed one of the documents was her high school transcript, and when I took a glance, I saw at the bottom that she had been suspended for a week her sophomore year for calling an African-American student a plantation N-word with the hardest of the uh, R letters. I was shocked and sick to my stomach. 
I waited for her to come back to my room. When she saw me sitting down with a pissed off expression, holding the paper, her face immediately went paper white. Before I even said anything, she immediately asked me where I found it, and when I asked her why the hell she would say something like that, she took it from me and asked me to stop snooping. I told her that it wasn't snooping as I had no idea it was private, and additionally, I asked her to answer my question. She said that it was a long time ago and started walking away. When I followed her, I explained that seven years was still pretty recent. She glared and said, things are different down there. You wouldn't know that not every place is New York. I could not have thought of a worse excuse. I bottled my anger while we moved the boxes, but the minute we were in her new apartment with some privacy, I started chewing her out about how disgusting what she said was, and it was even worse how in seven years, she couldn't see why what she did was wrong. I was a little harsh, and she started crying, but she said, I'm free to think and speak how I want. I love you, but you can't force me to think one way. I lost it at this point and just walked out on her of, of her apartment. I was planning on crashing at her place, but she chased me asking for me to come back, but I wasn't having it. I ignored her phone calls for the rest of the week because of how mad I was. Was there more messed up stuff I didn't know about her? And even if this was all how I, would my family have reacted? I How could I have functioned with her? I came home from work one day and I saw her sitting on my couch and she said that we had to talk. I started off by saying that if she wanted a conversation, I'd ask a few questions and she couldn't dodge them, cry, or be dishonest in any way. She reluctantly agreed. She admitted that she didn't invite me to her home because she didn't want to scare me off. I'm guessing most of her family is that and shared her view on race. I asked her for her and her family's thoughts on civil rights and slavery, or, to which she responded, We don't really talk about that. She also admitted that her ancestors were slave owners. When I asked her if she thought that was wrong, she said, Well, yeah, we can say that now, but back then they were just running a business. I asked her if we ever had a kid and they brought home a black friend, what would she say? She admitted that she wasn't comfortable with it. That's when it clicked that while just about everyone had been speaking about the election for a few weeks, that she hadn't said a peep about it. I told her that I needed to think for a little bit, and I asked her to leave. She complied, but before leaving, she told me that I was her soulmate for life, and that she couldn't imagine a future or a life without me. As I closed the door, I realized that despite what I learned about her, I felt the same way. Over the last few days, she's pretty much done a bunch of nice stuff without me even asking. She has a key to my place and has let herself in to clean my apartment and cook. She has also come on to me and initiated the S pretty much every day. I assume this is a way to expedite me for giving her but I was mildly annoyed that she thinks that she can sweep this under the rug with the loot stuff and food. I don't have anyone I can talk to about this. If I stay with her and I speak to my family, they'll hate her for the rest of our relationship, and I don't want to spoil the relationship they have. I don't think a therapist would be much help here. While I did think about whether I should stay with her, I realized that it was a rhetorical question. I'm not going to break up with her, it's like she mentioned. We are meant for each other, and I don't want to spend my life with someone else. I still can't help but feel guilty. Racism is wrong, and if I'm not doing anything to fix it here, am I complicit? I've been reading a few books about psychology, and don't think there's any room to change her as a person after years of brainwashing. Has anyone faced something like this? Has anyone had a spouse across party aisles? Will our relationship survive, and or will it implode if she has another outburst? If somebody has an outburst in high school and then there's no other traces of that, then that's one thing, but uh, 
the whole thing of like I would be uncomfortable with my kid having a black friend that that's kind of something that's going to be sticking around like a big old bookmark but with that that is going to have to be with the video if you guys would love to be absolutely amazing show your support and see more videos like this one in the near future be sure to hit that like button leave a comment down below to start up the wholesome internet discussions and if you guys have not already subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications now I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye!